Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we're going to continue on, or we're actually going to start, the um, SHA 256 hash calculator uh, that I sort of outlined in the previous uh, Part 0 video. So today we're going to start the actual programming. I thought we'd um, start with, start kind of inside out or bottom up. Um, we'll start with the small functions like the rotate right. Um, and then we'll build out from those. Once we've got those created, we can build around them with the bigger functions that use them and then build out to the, the main program. So we're going to start with the, the small, simpler stuff. Um, one thing I didn't mention last time, I wanted to mention um, the SHA spec is big Indian, meaning that when you read in four bytes, it, you know, it sees things as 32-bit values. So 32 bits is four bytes, so when you read in four bytes, that's one value. Now on the Commodore, we typically put the small the small byte first and then on up. You know, we, we usually do it uh, little endy and low byte first. In SHA, everything is big endy, and so the, big, the, the high byte comes first, the highest byte, then the next highest down to the smallest one. Since the, the data is going to come in that way and needs to be processed that way, we're just going to write the program that way. We're not going to try to flip every value end for end um, so that it's little endy. And there's no, it's really, it's just a convention anyway that we, that we do it that way. Um, we don't have to process data that way. So we'll just process it the way SHA expects us to. And I'm also going to start using zones in this uh, file um, in the assembler, which I haven't done before. That'll allow us to localize labels, and we'll see how that works in a minute here. So the first thing we'll do is a rotate right function. Um, so I did start just a, an empty file here. I'm going to call this file 32-bit lib, meaning it'll be a, a library file of routines for doing these things to 32-bit values, just the basic bit shifting and exclusive oring and anding, things like that. And then we'll have a main program that will that will call that. That'll be SHA 256. Okay. And I guess we should probably also have um, uh, what do they? Well, I don't know what to call it exactly. Um, we'll just call it SHA Inc for include. And this will be an include file of um, addresses and things to define. I, I kind of just threw everything together in the worm program. I'm going to try to separate things out and keep things more organized this time. So we'll, in our main program then, we'll source that. And that'll pull that in. I don't know if I have to have that in the left column or not. I'm, try, I'm trying out a different, um, a different Emacs mode that's supposed to work better for Acme Assembler. Um, we'll see how it goes here. So we'll pull in the ink file and we'll put some stuff in there. We'll, we'll, we'll do our defines in there basically. And then at the bottom we'll source the uh, what I call 32-bit lib. And that'll give us our functions that we need. Alright, first thing I want to do is in the ink file define we're going to have a temp we're probably going to end up with several temp locations we're going to want them all in zero page i'm going to go ahead and put this one um, the one we're going to test with today i'm going to put it at one eight in zero page just because there is a little bit of inf there is a value there and so when we when we test we can roll that value to test it um, So that'll be our that'll be our test location for now. We'll end up with more of them later, but we'll add them as we need them. Okay. So let's go to our library file. So we need to start a zone. Um, we'll call this zone rotate right in because that's what it's going to do. And then we pro we start programming in this zone. So we'll start with a label. I'm not certain whether labels can have dashes in them. I think maybe they can only have underscores. 
All right, so first of all, what does this need to do? Well, we need to rotate a 32-bit value to the right n number of times. So we want to be able to pass the number of times into this, into this thing. Um, rotate a 32-bit value n times. Okay, so pass the number of times in, we'll pass that in the Y register. And then the other thing is we need to know where this value is in memory because it's not necessarily going to be in the same place every time. As we, as we work on this, we'll see that um, if we go back to the spec here, our notes, like here in, in function F1, we're going to have to take value A and copy it somewhere and then rotate it twice. And then we've got to take value A again, so we can't clobber A. So we have to copy it somewhere, rotate it two times. Then we have to take value A again, copy it somewhere else, rotate it 13 times, and then exclusive or those two together, and then copy A somewhere else. And so we're going to have multiple locations where we need to be able to rotate. And so we need to be able to pass an address into this routine also. So we'll pass the, and all these things, all these temporary locations are going to be in zero page. So we'll pass the zero page address of the first byte in, in the accumulator. All right. So the first thing we have to do is store that zero page address somewhere. And we don't know where that's going to be yet. So I'm just going to put question marks. The number of times that's going to be a, a loop. Um, yeah, that's fine. So then the next question is, okay, we've got to do this. We're going to have to do this to four, four values, but what do we have to actually do? Well, since we're rotating to the right, we want to start with the first byte. Think of that as the byte on the left. If we look at the monitor here, we're, we're going to be rotating this section right here, the, these four bytes. So we're going to take the first byte, the 1B, and rotate it one to the right, one bit to the right. Then we're going to take the next byte, which will be at one nine, will be at the, the location one nine, not value one nine. But we'll take this first byte, rotate it one to the right. Then we'll take this one and rotate it, and then we'll take this one, rotate it, and then we'll rotate this one. Then we've got to look and see if if a bit rotated off into the carry flag, and if it did, we stick that bit on the beginning of this one. Now the first time, I keep saying rotate, but really the first one, we don't want to rotate. We want to shift it because we don't want to pull in the carry flag. It, whether, whether or not the carry flag is set, we don't want to pull it in. We just want to pull in a zero. Um, and so the first one, we just want to shift to the right. Now, actually, if I think about that a little bit, we could, we could rotate them all just to keep it simpler and then fix that first bit based on the final carry flag. We're going to have to do that half the time anyway when the carry flag is set. We're going to have to set that first bit. That's the thing. If we don't, if we make sure the first bit is zero by shifting the first byte, then when the carry flag is not set at the end of the fourth byte, we don't have to do anything else. Um, we would only have to do something if it's set. So I guess we'll do that. Um, figuring this out as we go. But so what we do want to do then is left shift right, or not left shift right, logical shift right, a location. All right. And so let's say that we'll just call the location 1 8, but that's not what it's necessarily going to be. So right here, when we store the accumulator, we want to store it into here plus one. All right, so what we're doing is we're taking the value passed in from the accumulator, which is the, the address of the first byte, and we're putting it right here. Here, the label here points to, and actually I need to make that dot here. Um, so that it's local. Um, that the, z the zone localizes dot symbols, symbols that start with a dot. So I need to make sure and use 
dots on the ones I actually want localized. We don't want this one localized because we've got to jump to this one from our main file. We just want this one so we can reuse it in other zones. So by storing a into here plus one, the here label points to this operation. And so the next byte, the plus one byte, is this one right here. So whatever we pass in as our destiny, as our location, so we can make this zero and it won't matter because it's going to get replaced with the value of a anyway. All right. So that'd be the first thing to do is to shift that right. Now the carry flag is going to be either set or not set depending on whether it shifted a, a bit, depending on the bit that shifted off the right of this. So now we can rotate right. Let's see. We still need hmm. Yeah. You know what? There might be a better way to do this. Um, keeping track of where... I think maybe one of the issues is you can't do you can't do indirect addressing into zero page um, and so we can't use an indirect address to do it so let me check the book here Yeah, with all these, um, LSR is the same as these, same as the rotate ones. You can only do indexing with X, and you can't do any indirect indexing with these with these operations. So, hmm. So we're going to have to use X, but. Yeah. I guess that's all right. We'll just have to, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Just have to think about it a little differently. Let's pass the zero page in X. Let's pass the address in X. Okay. Well, let's get rid of this. I don't know if we'll need dot here. We'll leave it there for now. Then let's left shift right zero comma x. Okay. Since x is the address like one eight that we're going to be passing, do indexing it like this will will ensure that it. Um, so it'll, it'll add that to zero, and so we're indexing up to one eight. Then, okay, yeah. Then we'll increment x, rotate right, zero, zero, comma, x, and do that three times. Okay. But now, since we passed the number of times to do it, and what, well, then we, we still need to deal with the final bit. So let's do that before I forget about it. Now the question is, is the carry set? So if, let's say branch of carry clear ahead. If the carry is not set, we'll just branch ahead because we don't need to do this next thing. If the carry is set, then we need to, let's see. Hmm. We need to go back to the first byte and set the first bit is what we need to do. So decrement x, decrement x, decrement x, and then load a from 0, 0, comma x, uh, or that with 8, 0. 
can see that that sets the first byte and then store that back into 0, 0, comma x. That should set the high that should set the high bit on the first byte. That also sets x back to where it was, which we were going to have to do anyway. Um, and then there's where we branch forward to. Okay. Then we need to decrement y and branch if branch if not equal to y or branch if y is not equal to zero back up to uh, I guess here because X has already been put back to where it started so we'll be back at the beginning of the byte of the first byte start over with the next loop. So if we pass in once, it's going to do it once, decrement y to 0, and then break through. So that seems correct. Um, I think that's it. Unless I'm missing something, that should do it. We're shifting the first byte right, then rotating the next three right, which will Actually, is my carry going to survive those increment x's? That's a something to find out. Let's check and see. Okay, yeah, increment x. <clears throat> this is where the reference guide comes in really handy. Increment x does not affect the carry. So our, our increment x is not going to... Our increment x in between these is not going to clobber, you know, it's not going to affect what's happening between these rotates. So each shift is going to shift the last bit, the low bit, off into the carry and then the next rotate will pull that bit in at the top of, the, at the top of that byte. Mm -hmm. So I think that's everything. We've incremented x three times and then decremented it. Well, wait a second. We have to decrement x three times regardless of whether we're branching, don't we? Because when we start over, x needs to be pointing back to the first, first one. So let's move that up. The decrement X's won't clobber the carry either, so our carry will still be clear or set right here, depending. Okay, let's try that, then there, that's the end of our zone. Alright, then to call this, we just need a little bit of test program in our main thing here. So we'll start... Um, Let's load A. Let's see, what are we passing again? We're passing the address in X and the times in, in Y. So we'll load A with temp1, or sorry, we'll load X with temp1. Oops. Load X with uh, the value temp1. Load Y with 4. Or no, sorry, let's just load Y with 1. We did, let's just shift it once to begin with as a test. And then jump to subroutine. Uh, what did we call it? Rotate right in. And then break. So we can see how that looks. Um, Actually, before we do that, or before before it does it, let's fill in those values with some other stuff. So, um, let's fill them in with some stuff that would uh, AA. AA is 10101010, so it should be really easy to tell after a couple of tries if this is working. So we'll store that into temp1 yeah. temp1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 okay so we'll store AA into those four bytes and then we'll do the roll on it and we'll roll it one time it should roll everything 10101010 should roll to 0101 you know, zero, 0101. Zero, it should turn them into five, five, 
should turn them all into 5-5. Five, five. Um, okay, let's try that. Garbage data at end of statement. Okay. What's wrong with our zone thing? I must have done the zone wrong. Let's see. First time I've used zones, so I may have made a mistake. Let's check. any zones in their examples. That's not very helpful. Um, I guess I'm not supposed to put quotes around it. Okay. I'll try it that way. And the, the dash probably isn't going to work either. I wish more languages allowed you to use dashes in your symbols. Um, it's a silly, silly little thing, but a dash is you don't have to shift for a dash, and you do have to shift for um, for an underscore. So it's just aggravating to have to shift all the time. I, it's one. I mean. It's a silly little thing, but one reason I like Lisp is you can use dashes. Um, Perl 6 is it's one of the reasons I've dabbled in Perl 6 for a while, even though I didn't necessarily like it much. So you could use dashes in your variable names. Just a nice little thing. Um, okay, let's try that. Got to go back. All right, assembled that time. this with uh, RL wrap. Oh, well. So we should have our code at 1300. So when that runs, <clears throat> it should fill in those four locations and then it should rotate those four locations. And it broke, which is what we expected. So if we check the Yep, there they are. Five, 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 five. So now, if we rotate it again, it should go back to a a a a a a a, um, or not if we rotate it again, but if we rotate it twice. So now let's look at the code again, and just to save time assembling it again, let's change thirteen o c to load y with two. So now we're going to rotate it two times. Okay, so it's still gonna it's still gonna stick AAs in there, but then it's gonna rotate it twice because we just changed that one line. Okay, and put them back to AAA. -A 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 -A. So, <laughs> um, okay, so that works, um, and it actually ended up being less uh, weird than I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was gonna be doing self-modifying code there, but since it turned out we're going to need to do, modify four commands and I realize eh, that's going to get unfortunate or actually well actually six of them as it turns out this may not be as efficient as it could be so if I you know if I think of any ideas or if anybody suggests anything that can speed it up we'll certainly do that because these these routines are going to get called a lot um, that's why we're starting with these. They're the, they're the lowest level routines and so they get used by all these functions over and over. So now let's do let's, we've got to rotate we've got to rotate right in. So it should be fairly quick to do a rotate left in. There. 
but it is gonna it is gonna require some changes because to rotate a 32-bit value left we're gonna want to start on the right end of the value we can't start on the, the left end of the value so this time we're gonna have to increment X three times first so let's do that to get it up to the last byte so it's pointing to the last byte instead of the first byte so um, I didn't say this was to the right up here to the left in times alright so we'll still pass the number of times in Y the zero page address of the first byte in X I mean we could pass the address of the last byte but I think it's better to let this routine you know, keep keep the way we call these routines <clears throat> consistent let this routine um, adjust so this time instead of LSR on the last byte we want to do or instead of LSR on the first byte we want to do ASL on the last byte that arithmetic shift left so we're going to shift that one left which pulls in a zero as the low the low uh, bit then decrement X then rotate left so we pick up a carry if there's a carry bit set decrement X rotate left decrement X rotate left okay so now we incremented X three times to get up to the top or to get up to the low byte the, 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 the fourth byte now we've decremented it three times and got back to the first byte now if carry is clear we don't need to do anything because we don't have a one in the carry to put on the end of the the high byte but if it isn't clear or let's see no that's okay if it isn't well no no we need to yeah this is gonna have to be a little different um, okay I think we still have to parallel the way we did it before we've got to increment X back up to the to the low byte and then branch if carry clear if it's not clear we load that low byte or it with one to set the low bit and store it back and then we decrement and branch but since we've already incremented three times we've already incremented three times we've already incremented X three times we don't want to do it again up here so we need to move our label down to here you know I think I discovered that I don't actually have to put colons after them in the uh, in the assembler documentation uh, I, it's, it appears it just oh it just ignores that because a colon is just a separator in, in assembly in this assembly anyway for some reason, I guess I like. I guess I just like them. They're they're irrelevant, but I guess they just kind of make it stand out. All right. So this time, we increment X up to the high up to the low byte. It's, it's getting confusing. Up to the low byte doesn't sound right, but it is. Shift it left, then decrement X back to the next byte. Rotate it left. Decrement X. Rotate it left. Blah blah blah. We get to the we get to the first one then increment X back to the last one so it's ready branch if carry is clear and then branch and then continue the loop if there's another loop to do um, okay I think that's it for that one <clears throat> so it had to be a little different because it needs to start from the other end and so since we're passing in basically this is just to correct for the fact that we're passing in the left end of this number when we need to start processing on the right end of this number to roll it left so that's just correcting for that so going back to our main program then let's um actually let's do this a little differently let's put in Let's put AAs in the first two and put 
five fives in the next two. Just so we can... It'll make it a, a little more obvious if we're breaking something with this. Um, and we'll rotate it one time to the left. Okay. Assemble. Okay, I've got to fix that. Oh, I killed my... Hold on a second. I killed my... Uh, thing. If you quit the mon if you type quit in the monitor, just a tip for anyone else who's using the monitor like I am. If you type quit in the monitor, it kills the whole emu the whole emulator, not just the monitor. So I've got to rearrange things back here to where let's see, how did I have this? Sorry, I'm screwing it up here. Okay, that's better. Now back to where we were. Okay. Load. Oh, I'm going to have to CD into there first. I've been typing load worm for so long, my fingers keep wanting to do that. All right. So we're going to store AA into the first two bytes, 5.5 five in the next two bytes, and then rotate that to the left once. Okay see what it did all right so it did that like I say it's but since I made them different values um, or did it do it yeah I did it sorry because you take AA and shift it to the left you get five five except you're not bringing in a bit from the from the next one because it was already five and so yeah that's all that's all correct. It rotated around to the bottom end correctly. Um, if we do it twice, if we change 130E to load load Y with two, um, then. I'm not even sure if that's right. I'd have to stop it. I guess I'd have to figure out the math. I guess I'd have, I'd have to draw out the bits, but I think that's right. We're pulling in the A turned into 5, and then the 5 pulled in, the 5 shifted to the left and pulled in a bit. Yeah, that's right. Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's right. Let's make it 16 times, which would be 1, 0, and hex. If we shift it 16 times, or not 16 times, 32 times. Let's make it 32 times, because 32 times should return you to what you originally had. If you shift 32 bits, you've got a 32-bit value. You should come back to where you started out. So let's do that. That should get us back to AA55. Yep, there it is. Okay. I'd say it's working correctly. Um, I could test it a little more strenuously, but let's not do that right now. All right. Going back to our notes. We have... Okay, so we have our rotate right and rotate left ones, which... I explained in the first video, the part zero video, um, I don't have rotate left down here, but for some of these, like rotate right 22 bits, it's actually going to make more sense to make that rotate left 10 bits, because that's the same thing if you rotate it, you know, if you, ro if you rotate a wheel 90 degrees to the left or 270 degrees to the right, those are the same thing, you end up in the same place, and it's the same way here, you're rotating things around in a circle, if we go 22 times one way and 10 times the other way, it's the same thing because 32 is all the way around. Um, it's going to be the same thing here. Instead of rotating right 25 times, we'll rotate left 7 times. And so there's going to be a couple others like that. Um, now we have a shift right. We need to be able to shift right a certain number of times. 
this is actually simpler than those because in this case we don't need to rotate the last bit around to the end so let's come up here we'll grab this copy it and make this shift shift to 32 bit value to the right it's all going to work the same way except we just don't need to do the stuff with the carry because we don't care if whatever drops off the right end we just it's just lost so we're just dividing this number by two every time we shift it so yeah that's all we need to do is take out the stuff that that uh, sticks the carry flag back on the beginning of the first byte if it's set so we'll just take that out and now we have a shift right function that was quick let's test it to be sure Okay, we shifted. I gotta stop and think about this. We shifted the A's to the right. AA, AA is one zero one zero one zero one zero. So that shifted a zero into the next byte, which was a five. So it was one zero one, or it was zero one zero one, and now it became zero zero one zero. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So that works. We don't even have to really try it more times because it's going to work. That doesn't, whether it brings a carry, there's no carry to bring around. So one time should be good on that. Okay, back to here. We now have our rotates and our shifter. So now we need to get a little more complicated. Now we need more temp locations for one thing. Um, because as we start combining these things, we're gonna we're gonna need more places to keep things. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Yeah. Okay. And this is gonna be where it gets maybe a little tricky for what I was thinking, <laughs> but. Um, Let's see. Ink. Let's put temp two at the next location, which would be one B and temp three two O. Well, wait a second. Yeah. B C D no wait a second. Eighteen, nineteen, one A, one B, sorry, that'd be well, one C. And then the next one would be two O. Okay, that might be all we need. Um, okay, so let's say we need we need a function that can take two values and and them together and leave the result where the first one was. Let's let's put it that way. Um, And again, the the calling routine will have to put these things where they be, or you know we'll have to put them where they belong and pass the pass the pointer to them. Um, and I think because of the way we're doing this, or, yeah. So let's just push that down. Um, and two values leave the result in the first one.
pass the, let's see, we, there's no number of times involved here. So we'll pass the zero page address of the first byte in dot x. But now we have two, two values. Um, I think to be able to do this, I think we're going to have to assume that the two values are right after each other in memory. Or at least that's what, that's how we'll do it for now. So let's just assume the second byte or the second value follows the first in memory. So there are going to be eight contiguous bytes in memory. All right. I'm not sure about this one. We're, we're going to see how this goes. Um, we're going to call this fan zone. And we'll call this function and. All right. Again, we're passing x. And so that's going to be the address of our first byte. Now, now we not, since this is, this is all Boolean, there's no carrying from one byte to another. So it doesn't actually matter here which end of this we start on. We'll just start on the, the left end, I guess, because it doesn't matter. And that's where we're already pointing. So to do this, we're going to need to load A from um, 0, 0, comma x like we did before. But then we need to end that with the value in 0, 4, comma x, because that's going to be the first byte of the next value, the second value. And then we're going to store that back into 0, 0, comma x. Then we need to do that again for the second, third, and fourth ones. So that seems like a good point for a loop. So we're going to load y with 4. We'll put a branch back here, decrement y, branch if not equal, back to there, and then return. Okay. That almost seems too simple. Um, but if I guess if, 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 if that's a problem, if that isn't going to work, if it's not flexible enough requiring the two values to be right next to each other, like if we need to, if we need to and the value in temp3 with the value in temp1, what we'll have to do is pass the address of the second value in another register, just one of the other registers besides x, and we'll have to store it over top of this. But for now, I guess, well, maybe I should just do it that way because that'll it'll make things more flexible. Pass the zero page address of the second value in A. Okay, and so then at the beginning of this, we'll store A into, let's see, that's going to be out here and so that's going to store that into here plus one dot here plus one and we also have to end end of the zone auto zone right um, because that's going to it's going to replace this 04 with whatever is in A when we call this. All right, I think that I think that's going to make sense. So let's do that with our. Let's do that here. Let's put. Let's do it this way. We've, we're going to load a a a a a into into temp one, and then let's load um, 
six six into temp two into all the all the bytes of temp two. Then we'll load X with temp one, load A with temp two. We don't need to set Y because we're not that's not used or we, we don't pass anything in Y to this routine. And then jump to subroutine um, fanned. All right, so that should and them together. And when you and together AA and 66, six, if you think about it, AA is 101010, 6 is 0110, 0110. And so what we should get is 0010, 0010. We should get twos, basically. We should get 2222 all the way across. So let us test. There. Uh, we didn't. We got A's and sixes, so something's funny. Let's see. Let's see what we did here. We put A's into temp one into all its locations. Sixes into temp two. Let's just make sure I defined these right. Yeah, appears so. And then we call F and after loading X with the pointer to temp one, loading A with a pointer to temp two. We call F and. Stored A into here plus one. I've got to be missing something obvious here, but. Uh, I guess we're going to need to make some breakpoints. Um, right here, we store, we take the A that's been passed right here, load it with one C. And then we store that in the 1324, which is right here. So that, oh, 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 dummy. Um, yeah, since we're storing that, we don't, well, yeah, that's not going to work. Can't do it that way. Because I'm indexing all the way from 0 with x, so I can't change this to the actual location. <clears throat> Hmm. To do that, I would have to change all three to the actual location and, and get rid of the X's. Um, can do that, but going to have to do that if we're going to have it be that flexible. I think we're going to have to modify them all. So let's put the here here. Get rid of this. Okay. Then we want to, A is the second value, so we want to store that here. So that's going to become here plus three to offset that to there. Then we'll store X into here plus one and here plus five. Then we need to load X with four because we can't we can't um uh 
we can't um, index with y. We have to index with x. And so let's just leave these at zero so we can tell what's happening to them. Um, load x with 4, but then the first thing we need to do then is decrement x so that it's 3 branch if not equal ahead. Well, that's an ugly way to do it, isn't it? Seems like to me. Return. I don't really like, I don't know if I like that. I like to be able to I guess that works as well as anything. Um, branch if not equal ahead to here, do the thing, and then jump back to here. Um, and that can't, I can't use a, not jump, dummy. Um, okay, so we load X with four, but then we immediately decrement it so that it's three. No, wait a sec, I can't branch here because that's... Sorry, I'm... Uh... Not thinking very well. Okay, we're just gonna have to compare X. Maybe I'll think, maybe I'll think of an el the elegant way I should be doing this later, but for now, let's just do it the simple way. So we're going to start at start out with x as three. It'd be stupid to start it at four and immediately decrement it, wouldn't it? Um, start out with x at three. Decrement x after doing the thing. Compare x. Maybe I've been staring at this too long. Um, we want we want it to happen when x is zero, so we don't want to. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we'll decrement x, and then we'll branch if plus back to here, because as soon as x rolls around from zero to ff, that sets the negative flag, which is really just the the bit seven flag, and so we can just do that branch of plus. That's probably the the most efficient way to do it. You can do that as long as your loop variable, your your loop register, in this case x, isn't isn't starting out over 127. Um, you can get away with that branching on plus um, because it's not going to become minus until it gets to a number between 128 and 255, which it won't do in this case, except for when it goes below zero. Um, okay, yeah, I've definitely been staring at this one too long. Um, so it loads x with 3, then does the thing on these addresses, plus 3, then plus 2, then plus 1, then 0, and then it should fall through and return. All right. I already saved that. Okay, so let's go to 1300. It should set up again. Yeah, A's, all A's and all sixes should turn it into twos. There they are, okay. That worked. So it took it took the A's, ended them with the sixes, and then replaced the A's, replaced temp one with the value in the twos. Now, the other thing to check is well, I guess that 
no, we don't need to check that because we already set it up so that it's flexible. We use any address. It didn't, didn't matter that it happened to follow. Um, it's fine. It would use temp3 just as well. It would be the same way. All right. One, let's get in at least one more here. Um, we also need to be able to, to exclusive or two values. And we'll do this the same way. This will be very simple. So we'll copy again. And it should all be exactly the same except right here. We just want to exclusive or the two, the two values. I hope it's clear what I'm doing here with these modif with these with this self modifying code. Um, it's taking the address pointed to by A and sticking it in, into here plus three, which is this right here. This the this load this load A is here. Then this value is here plus one. This this zero is this here plus one. This exclusive R operation is here plus two, and so then this zero is here plus three. So it's putting the, the address of the second value right there to set up to set this code up. And then it's putting the X the X is pointing to the first value. It's putting that into here plus one, which is right here, and here plus five, which is right there. And so what what actually ends up running by the time the code gets to here what actually ends up running in our case looks like this that's I think or unless I have that backwards I got that backwards 1c 1a 1c okay so this is the code that actually ends up running by the time it's done with these two commands and gets down to here it's actually it actually looks like this um, and if we check in the monitor, you should be able to see that. Um, yeah. Right. I need to back up a little more. Right uh, here. So that's that's the code that it's actually running because we had this self-modifying bit up ahead that, that sets up the addresses for it to work on. Okay. Now I've got to clean this up. All right. So this is going to be our f exclusive or function exclusive or it does the same thing. Exclusive ors it. Don't think there's anything else to say about that one. Um, uh, let's see. We need to test it. What happens if we exclusive or a's and sixes? If we just change this to call that, there's an a, and there's a six. Well, if you exclusive or that, you're going to get. One one zero zero one one zero zero. So you're going to get um, C C. That's what you should see. Uh, should see C C. And that's what we got. So it took the A's exclusive order with the sixes and produced C's. All right. Coming back to our notes. We need a not function. That's what this that's what this here means. It's exclusive oring the E register the, the, the E value with FF. That's a, that's a not flip flips all the bits is what it does. But we want to we want a routine that does that. Let's change this back to what it originally said, not E. So let's make a not E, or let's make a not function. Not 
not a value. And leave the result in place. Okay. Pass a zero page address. Um, of the value in A. We don't have a second value. All right, so in this, this is going to be a little different. We still, let's see, I'm going to change the zone here. Um, F not. And the, the whole thing with the zones is that means I can keep using this label here. I don't have to keep thinking up a new label because there's no conflict between using the same local label in different zones. That's basically the purpose of that. It doesn't have anything to do with the, the final code. It's all about assembler organization. It allows me to um, not have to have a whole long page full of labels just so that I can use them in different places without conflict. So um, we're passing the value in A, so we're going to need to store that some places. Let's figure out where. To not it, we're just exclusive oring with ff. So we're going to load a from the location, exclusive or it with ff, and store it back in the location. So where do I need to store these pointers? Well, at 1 it looks like, and at 5. Because here plus 1 is right here, and then and there's plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and plus 5 would be right here. So once again, we're just we're just kind of removing the, the part about the other value. We're just dealing with one value now. And so let's come back to our main program. We can still store that stuff. We don't care about that. Um, this is this is still fine actually because we want we want to be able to do this on any of our temp variables so let's just go ahead and do it on temp2 and jump to f not so we're going to not the ver the value at f2 which is the 66 value which should turn it into a's uh it didn't Hmm. Unless I'm not thinking right about what it should do, but I'm pretty sure that's what it should do. Pretty sure it should turn sixes into A's. Or no, 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 wait a second. No, it should turn sixes into nines. But it didn't. So whatever it was supposed to do, it didn't do it. Um, yeah, we stored sixes there. We jumped to F naught. store the location of temp2 into the two places here. Oh, da da da, dum dum dum. Exclusive, this is an easy mistake to make over and over and over. You just kind of have to keep watching for it. When I exclusive or with dollar sign ff, I'm saying exclusive or the accumulator with the value at the memory location ff. Okay. This is a good thing to point out, I guess, which right now happens to be zero. So we're exclusive oring with zero, which doesn't change anything, and so that's what happened. Um, you got to put a pound sign on the front of it to say literally FF, not the memory location FF, the value FF. And that's just, like I say, that's an easy mistake to make over and over. Um, no real way to catch it, I don't think, except just try not to do it. And anytime something doesn't work, start looking for that kind of thing. Okay, that time it turned our sixes into nines. So we have our not function. Back to the notes. What else do we need? We have an and function, an exclusive or function, a not function. We have our rotate functions. We have all our small functions. So that's gotten us off to a start here. Now we'll have to start bundling those together. Um, actually, that took an hour, so that's that's a good place to stop. Now the next step will be to start bundling these together because like say for F1 here we've got to be able to this will need to take a take a value A copy it to temp1 rotate it twice then copy it again copy the original value A to temp2 rotate it 13 times and then exclusive or that with 
temp one, and then, you know, then it'll have to, um, actually, let's do one more. Let's just, let's do one just so we can say we did. Um, F1, because F1 always works on A, and so that's going to be simple, um, because we, it's, it's always going to be a certain location. So, zone F1, zone. Okay, this, this isn't even really a routine for bit shifting. This is a routine for the SHA program. So let's put this in the main program, actually, um, rather than over there. So F1, um, this is always going to use the value A. So we've got to fill in, uh, where did, there to go. Okay, so let's put A. Um, this is, this, these are called working variables. So we'll call this VA, variable A. Because I think if we just call it A, the assembler won't have any way to tell whether that's the value A or an, or a symbol A. So we're gonna we're gonna call it VA, and then we'll have VB and up to VH for our ver for our working variables. Um, okay, so to look back at the notes, then F1 needs to copy A into temp one. Oh, that's what we need. That's that's what we need to do now is a copy routine. So let's do that, and then we'll be done for today. Um, we'll just do that so that that doesn't cause an error. All right, so we need a routine to copy four bytes from one place to another place. Um, I think we'll, we can start with one of these and modify it. Now I'm going to call this copy ZZ, meaning copy from a zero a zero page location to another zero page location, because I think we will eventually need to be able to copy from a regular memory location to a zero page location and vice versa. And so this one's going to be ZZ, meaning zero page to zero page. Okay. Um, ZZ. <coughs> All right. Copy one zero page value to another. So we're going to pass the zero page address of the source source value and the destination value in A. Uh, I need to. We actually change it so that doesn't apply anymore. So again, this is going to be pretty straightforward, I think. We need to go through the three bytes, copy them from one location to the other location. So we're not exclusive oring anything. We're just loading it and then storing it. Um, and so we'll load it from here plus one. So we'll load it from the, let's just do that. Okay. So we're going to store X, that's our source, into here where we're loading from. And then A is our destination. We're going to put that here where we're writing it to. Okay. That seems simple enough. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I want to extend this so that it can copy any number of bytes, not just four. Although, eh, maybe I'll write a separate routine. Well, shoot, I don't know. There are going to be a couple of times when we're going to want to copy more bytes, like 32 or 64, but I don't necessarily... So much of the time, it's just going to be 4, and I don't necessarily want to have to set 
a loop. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to have to set a loop every, or, well. Shoot. Yeah, I guess I do. I think I do want to make it flex that flexible. Copy. Well, let's let's call it this way. Copy a series of bytes within zero page. Okay. Pass the zero page address of the source in X and the destination in A. Pass the number of bytes in. Actually, we're going to need to pass the number of bytes in X just because of we, we've got to use X as our index in zero page. So we'll pass the source in Y, the destination in A, and the number of bytes in X. So this is going to be store Y. That's our source right here. A is still storing the destination right here. We won't load X with 3 because now X is going to come in with our number of bytes, and we need to decrement it right away because if yeah because if we're moving like say four bytes we want to start with byte three then two then one then zero and this is gonna um, this is gonna copy from the highest byte first the the one at the highest address and so you're not going to be able to copy actually that that's fine so you're gonna be able to copy you can overlap as long as you're going up and not down. Let's put it that way. Most of the time we won't be overlapping, but there is at least one situation I know that's coming up where we're going to be overlapping, and this that's going to be okay here. Um, so this is going to store, or this is going to copy a series of bytes up to, and we'll just, you know, we're going to have to be smart about making sure we don't loop around the end of zero page or something, which we shouldn't as long as we stick with our, our symbols as pointing to the right places. We should be fine with that. Um, okay, I think that is going to be good on that one. Let's do then, we've stored, we've stored a couple values in temp1 and temp2, that's fine. So, the source is in y, the number of bytes is in x now. So let's load 4 as our number of bytes. Destination is temp1. Let's copy temp. Uh, load y at temp1. Destination is temp2. So we're good. so this is going to copy from temp1 to temp2. Zz. I think that's right. Load y with the source. A with the destination. Yeah. So we're going to copy from temp1 to temp2. That's going to copy the aas from right here. To right here, so we're gonna end up with all A's across that line. Actually, let's make it temp three since we've got that defined. Let's make the destination temp three. We haven't used that yet, and that way we can see for sure. Because right now temp three, whoops, what happened? Uh, my mouse acting up on me again. Right now, temp3 is right here, so we'll be able to tell when it copies A's into that spot whether it worked. Okay. And it did. So it put the A's in temp1, and then it copied them to temp3. And it copied 4, because that's how many we told it to copy. It could be any number, but... That way we'll have a flexible copy, a flexible byte copy routine that we can use if we, like I say, most of the time it's going to be four, and so we'll just always have to set the count before we call it. Um, and then when we do need to copy more, we can do that. All right. Um, okay. Now we're an hour and a quarter, so I think that's definitely a good place to stop. So next time we come back, we will actually, the next time... I post anything it's going to be starting on a game because I'm going to do the two in parallel this is going to be really dry uh, bit shifting stuff and so I thought it'd be 
it'd be nice to also be working on a game at the same time so kind of lighten the load a little bit um, with work on that although I think this is maybe more straightforward than a game is going to be but um, I'm going to work on the two in parallel release one video about each one each week um, so two videos a week one on the game one on this and possibly mix in another one on other things if I think of something to whiteboard or something like that um, but I think we got a good start on this here um, next time we'll be working on these functions now that we have all the pieces they need to use then we can start putting together these six functions and then once we have those we can put together these things down here that use those functions so we'll just keep we'll keep working out from the working bottom up or inside out whatever you want to call it until we have the whole program written um, so let's check this all in to get we've got a couple things here that aren't pertinent yet so we've got modified changes we've got all our stages changed stayed we've got all our changes staged commit it started coding I think that's what we've done so far. So commit it, push it up to GitHub or GitLab, sorry, and there it is. So it'll be up there by the time, well, it's up there now, but it'll definitely be up there when I post this. So there we go. Um, so I think that's it for this time. Hope that was interesting, got off to a good start, and Hope to see you back next time and if you have questions um, like I've said before you can always find me in the C128 subreddit I check in there a few times a day and of course in the comments for the video so thanks for watching